Good evening and welcome to another Saturday night of mathematics. Tonight's topic is an introduction to rate of change. Specifically, we'll be looking at a couple of examples, one involving average rate of change and the other involving instantaneous rate of change. Here we go. Let's begin by taking a look at average rate of change. Here's an example. We are asked to find the average rate of change of the function f at x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 1 on the interval negative 1 to 2. So the thing to keep in mind when you're finding an average rate of change is that you're just finding a single slope. And that slope is the slope of what we call a secant line. So in this question, we are being asked to find the slope of the secant line from the point where x equals negative 1 to the point where x equals 2. Let's take a look at that on a graph. Here's the graph of our function, f at x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 1. And if we look up from an x value of negative 1, we see the corresponding point on the graph has a y value of 4. Similarly, if we look up from an x value of 2, we see that the corresponding point on the graph has a y value of 1. So we need to find the slope of the secant line that goes through these two points. It looks like this. Now to find the slope of this line, we just use our regular method for finding slope. Uh, in this case, the secant slope equals delta f at x over delta x. That is the change in the f at x value, or the change in the y value, over the change in the x value. Now keep in mind, uh, this is simply the rise divided by the run. Now we do have a graph available here, so we could, in this case, read the rise and the run directly off of the graph. As you can see, we have a rise of negative 3 right here and a run of 3. So we could simply divide these values uh, doing negative 3 divided by 3, which would give us a slope of negative 1. However, we often don't have a graph available or the numbers are, are difficult to read off of the graph. So we'll show this example using our function, uh, the equation for our function as well. So once more, we are going to do delta f at x over delta x, and we're working with uh, x values of negative 1 and 2. So what we need to do in our numerator is find f at 2 and subtract f at negative 1. This will give us the change in f at x, or that is the change in the y value. And in the denominator, we're simply going to subtract our x values, which in this case is 2 minus negative 1. So to evaluate our numerator, we can use our equation. Uh, to find f at 2, we simply substitute 2 in for x in the equation. And that gives us 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 plus 1, which results in a value of 1. Similarly, to find f at negative 1, we can sub negative 1 into the equation, giving us negative 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1 plus 1. And that gives us a value of 4. So in our numerator, we will simply have a 1 minus 4. And our denominator, 2 minus negative 1, works out to 3. Evaluating the numerator, we get negative 3. And dividing that by 3 gives us a value of negative 1. Therefore, our average rate of change on the interval negative 1 to 2 is negative 1. Now this value is simply the rate of change that we would need to go from our first point to our second point on our graph if we were to do so at a constant rate of change. There it is, average rate of change. Moving on, let's take a look at instantaneous rate of change. Now before considering an example, it's worth noting that there are many ways to solve problems involving instantaneous rate of change. There are methods that use large tables of values. There are methods that use slick shortcuts, uh, seen in calculus classes. Uh, but this here is just one possible way of going about solving an instantaneous rate of change problem. 
So here's an example. We are asked to find the instantaneous rate of change of the function f at x equals negative 2 times the square root of negative x plus 3 plus 5, where x equals 2. Now this is different from our average rate of change question that we just looked at. With the average rate of change, we were finding the slope of a single secant line from one point on the graph of the function to another point. But in this question, we are being asked to find a rate of change at a single point, the point where x equals 2. The way we go about doing that is to use something called a tangent line. And in this problem, we're actually being asked to find the slope of a tangent line at the point where x equals 2. Now let's take a look at what a tangent line actually is. Here's a graph of our function, f at x equals negative 2 times the square root of negative x plus 3 plus 5. If we look up from an x value of 2, we see a corresponding point on the graph that has a y value of 3. Now this is the point at which we are going to find the instantaneous rate of change. That is, it's this point at which we're supposed to find a slope. Now you might be wondering, how can we do that? For two reasons. First of all, it's only a single point. Don't we need two points to find a slope? But furthermore, this graph is curved. How do you find the slope of a, a graph if it's not a straight line? Well, the answer to both of these questions is you use a tangent line. Now what is a tangent line? Well, it's a straight line that intersects the graph at a single point, known as the point of tangency. In this case, it's our point right here. The tangent line doesn't slice through the graph, though. It kind of rests against the graph. It looks like this. So our goal is to find the slope of this line. And by doing so, we'll find the instantaneous rate of change of our function, where x equals 2. That is, we'll be finding the slope of our function, where x equals 2. In order to solve this problem, we need to know the y value of our point of interest. That is, we need to know the y value of this point of tangency. Now we have a graph available here, and we can easily see that the y value is 3. But if you didn't have a graph available, you can still find this value easily using the function's equation. In this case, you would simply substitute 2 in for x in the equation, and evaluating would give you a value of 3. So our point of interest, or our point of tangency, is the point 2, 3. Now we need to consider how we're going to find the slope of this tangent line. The way we'll do it is to use several secant lines. That is, several lines that go through two points on our graph. One of those points will be our point of tangency, 2, 3. Using several secant lines, we'll be able to estimate the slope of this tangent. Let's take a look at this idea in more detail. Once again, here's the graph of our function, f at x. Our point of interest is the point, 2, 3, and our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line through this point. This will give us the instantaneous rate of change at the point, 2, 3. To find the slope of this tangent line, we're going to introduce another point on the graph, this blue point here. If we draw a line through our red point of tangency and our new blue point, we get a secant line. It would be very easy to calculate the slope of this secant line. We could simply divide its rise by its run using our two points. Notice right now, though, that our secant line slope is not a good approximation of our tangent line slope. To make it a better approximation, we can simply move our second point closer to the point of tangency. Notice that the secant line now more closely resembles the tangent line. In fact, we can move this second point very close to our point of tangency. And if we move our points close enough together, it will become hard to distinguish between our secant line and our tangent line. Therefore, in this case, our secant line slope would actually be a very good approximation of our tangent line slope. And this is the approach we're going to take. We're going to calculate several secant slopes, 
each time moving our second point closer to our point of tangency. And we'll do so from the right of our point of tangency, as well as from the left of our point of tangency. Now, as you just saw, we'll be calculating several secant slopes. To make this process a little easier for ourselves, we'll create a formula. Let's make a formula that calculates secant slopes. Specifically, a formula that calculates the slope from the point of tangency 2, 3 to any other point on our curve. How do we do this? Well, once again, here's our graph, our function f at x. We know that the point of tangency is the point 2, 3. And we also know that we're introducing a second point on the graph, this blue point. Now this blue point is going to represent any point on our function's graph. So we'll make its x value x. x marks the spot. Now if the x value is x, the y value should be what we get when we substitute x into our function's equation. In other words, the y value is simply f at x. We can do better than this though. We know that f at x is this expression here. So we can make our y value that expression, specifically negative 2 times the square root of negative x plus 3 plus 5. Drawing a line from our point of tangency to our second point, we get this secant line. Our formula is going to be used to calculate the slope of this secant line. Now, as we know, the slope of a secant line is simply the change in the y value, that is, delta f at x, over the change in the x value, delta x. Keep in mind, as always, this is simply the rise divided by the run. Now, to calculate delta f at x, that is, the change in the y value, we simply need to subtract the y values of our two points. So we can take negative 2 square root negative x plus 3 plus 5 and subtract 3. This will give us delta f at x. For delta x, we simply need to subtract our x values. In this case, x minus 2. We can tidy up the numerator here a little bit. Instead of writing plus 5 minus 3, we can collect like terms and simply write plus 2 and our denominator remains as x minus 2. Now before we start using this formula, let's once again think about what it means. This formula represents a secant slope. So when we sub in x values, the output we get from this formula is a slope. It's the slope of this blue secant line. That is the line that goes from 2, 3 to some other point on the graph. So if we choose an x value of 4, for example, substituting 4 in for x in our little formula here will give us the slope of the secant line from the point where x is 2 to the point where x is 4. Now recall that our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line through 2, 3, and we were going to do so by moving this blue point closer and closer to our red point of tangency, each time calculating the slope of the secant line. And as the blue point gets closer and closer to our point of tangency, the slope of the secant becomes a better approximation of our tangent slope. Also recall that our plan was to move the blue point towards the red point of tangency both from the right as well as coming in from the left. We can display some of these values using a table. We'll start by moving in from the left of our point of tangency. In one column, we'll state our x value, and in the other column, we'll state the secant slope that we arrive at. So we want to start fairly close to the point 2, 3, just slightly left of it. So let's choose an x value of 1.9. Substituting 1.9 for x in our secant slope formula gives us the following secant slope. 0.97617693. We need to continue this process, but each time getting a little closer to our point of tangency. So instead of using an x value of 1.9, we can get a little closer to an x value of 2 by using 1.99. 
substitute this into the slope formula, and there's your value. We'll get a little closer with 1.999. Substituting this into the slope formula gives us this value. One more, 1.9999 substituted into our secant slope formula here gives us this slope value. Now this is quite a bit of substitution here, so if you have the option of storing our secant slope formula in your calculator, and then just telling the calculator to substitute these values, I'd highly recommend it. It makes the process much faster. Our last step is to calculate some secant slopes when approaching the point of tangency from the right. Similarly, we'll do this using a table. We'll have our x value column and our secant slope column. Something slightly to the right of our point of tangency might have an x value of 2.1. We substitute this into our secant slope formula, and there's the secant slope. And we continue this process getting closer and closer to our point of tangency. Finally, if we look at our secant slopes, as our x values get closer and closer to 2, we see that the secant slopes are getting closer and closer to a value of 1. And from this we can conclude that the slope of our tangent at the point 2, 3 is 1. Therefore, the instantaneous rate of change where x equals 2 is 1.